That's me. Yeah. Uh, well, I mean, yes, there was a uh, there was a change, um, and uh, having gone through Main Streets and Goodfellas and Casino, uh, uh, you know, I had covered the territory in uh, specific ways at those times. You know, uh, the overall issue of corruption is is something that I'm that I tend to be uh, uh, attracted to as material, um, and. Um, what, what happened with this, with Frank, when you described the character to me and I read the book, the book had this whole backdrop of this history. You say, uh, their history, the history of the United States, the world, all this going on. And I said, I think I know what to do. I think it's a matter of just like having a, cut the whole thing down to uh, its essentials and deal with the emotional impact, ultimately of the life you lead, you know, and everything else whether it's the Cuban Missile Crisis or, you know, Joey Gallo being shot, it's all peripheral, all forgotten about ultimately. Um, and so in a way it freed me. Um, and in terms of corruption, it's, it's that part of the human being. It's a, in, in the, the asphalt jungle, uh, Louis Calhern has a line, it's great, where he goes, uh, his wife says, why do you always, he's a lawyer, why do you always uh, uh, defend uh, the uh, bad guys and gangsters and that sort of thing? He goes, well, I, I look at um, crime as sort of a left-handed a left-handed um, endeavor of, human, of, human, of the human condition. And yeah, it's the left and the right in the sense of the right hand of the father, the left hand of the, you know, the whole sense of that's part of who we are. And how, it's always there. The dark forces are always there. Do we succumb to them um, all the time? Do we get sucked in and pulled back out? I mean, this is, this is the whole thing. It has to do with our own, you know, our pride too. Uh, in the case of Jimmy, when he keeps saying, it's my union, it damn well is his union. But he lost it. He lost it. Um, in any event, um, it, 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 it's more than corruption. It's about what's in ourselves as uh, human beings. Uh, for me, it's always uh, it's always been for different reasons, personal reasons or whatever. I'm aware of people that I knew around me sometimes who I knew were genuinely good people but wound up doing bad things. And then ultimately, are they cast out? You know, are they cast out of uh, a religious institution or are they cast out of the society around them? In some cases, they are. But in terms of uh, certain religious aspects, as I have, I mean, silence and movies like that, you know, the bottom line is the wretched, the ones who couldn't help it, the ones who, who, who can't do any, any, anything else. They're the ones that demand the compassion. And it's very hard, you know, and there's a compassion and understanding. You may hate it, you may get, you know, I don't know, but that's a very important thing to, to um, nurture in, hum, in human being and not cut people off dead. I remember back in, uh, when Mean Streets were shown at the, um, uh, New York Film Festival, one critic who actually was very nice with me at certain times, but this, this, this time he hated the film. And, um, uh, well, Mean Streets was the first, and afterwards he was very nice about certain films. Anyway, I don't want to mention his name. <laughs> Good guy, let him be. Uh, a long time ago. Anyway, uh, there was another film that ended the festival. It was a terrific film, and I want to mention the name because it is a beautiful film, and the filmmaker's a good friend. But uh, when the festival was over, he, he wrote um, uh, that... The last film, the, the film I just mentioned, is the front page. That's the front pages. Mean Streets is the back page. And I said, well, I didn't like the movie. But then, I, then over the years I realized, that's right, it is the back page. The back page what? You know, what is that? Human beings, uh, it's still about, it's the back page, a guy shot in an alley, uh, somebody caught and arrested and uh, spends 20 years in life for, for something, in, in jail for something that, uh, you know, five years later the law changes. Um, yeah, what about them? We're the back pages, you know? So that's what we've been doing. Uh, well, that's a really interesting question. I, I, I have, this is the second one today. I'm, I'm really, 
Uh, I really, I'm glad to say this. I've directed films in the sense that I was the director, the filmmaker of it, but I'm not a director and I'm not a filmmaker. They are. And I say that with all, I'm not I'm being, uh, uh, you know, it's just, I make films like when I do it, mean, it's, it's a learning experience for me and it's a sense of doing a home movie I have, uh, you know, and it's, and, and, and this is where I learn about, I learned about film by directing a film. I learned about editing and what it was by doing my own, the own, like how does someone, I have to say I was fortunate to have done Looking for Richard. Yeah. I did that because I had some idea, but really why I did it, what was motivated me was that I did Richard III several times. And when I did it in New York on Broadway, the reviewer said, Pacino has set back Shakespeare 50 years in America. <laughs> and I said, oh. that can't be. <laughs> I love Shakespeare. Oh, I love it. And I had done it, I had done it in, you know, in Boston. To, and there's a whole reason why that thing didn't happen. And one of the reasons was it, 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 it didn't have a concept in terms of, it's so interesting, you know, I, I, I could go on forever and I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna go on forever. <laughs> but when we did it in the, at the Loeb Theater, it didn't work at all. This, I was a young guy, just, but I became, I was famous already. But I had done Richard III because I knew I had done it at the actor's studio and had a feeling for it. I just wanted to do it and I wanted to learn. I always pretty much want to learn. And, and working with these guys, I learned a lot. I always, that's sort of what I leave my, that's probably why I continue to do it. But I, I did it and I did it at the Lobe. This is interesting. And, and the set was, yeah, yeah, because I'll tell you something about Irishmen and what they did in Irishmen about a, a set. You've seen it, so I can talk to you about it. But, <laughs> but I, I did it at the, at the Loeb in, in, in Cambridge. And I mean, I was going on with a fever. I was all, you know, no, I had my friend was all giving me the words and I had two weeks, but it wasn't there. And I, and I go out and you, you haven't lived until you go out in the second act. And uh, there's, there's a lot of red seats in front of you. <laughs> The half the audience left, maybe two thirds. And I thought, what do they do? What, what's wrong with me? And so, uh, but then I turned around and look at the set and the set was a bunch of bars. I don't know what the hell, it, who did that and what it came from. I had no idea what I was doing, you know, uh, now is the winter of our discontent, but, and, but in front of a bars. And I don't know where the hell I was. So they, threw me out of Boston, they threw me out of, out, of, out, of, out of Cambridge. But as I was leaving, my great friend and mentor, Charlie Lawton, said to me, Al, I don't know, I think I see something there. I see something there in what you're doing. David Wheeler, the great theater company of Boston, director, he came, he said, Al, let's not just give this up, please. I said, oh, well, I know, but I feel, you know, I want to get out of town or something. And they said, no, 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 we got this Church of the Covenant. It was right on Marlborough Street, beautiful. This church. And we all went in there. This medieval sort of thing. And I came up. There was a pulpit. And I came up from the pulpit like this with a stocking hat on. And I said, now is the winter of our disc. And the I just started to go. We had a set. That's it. No. We had a concept, a context. You understand, and when we went to Broadway, we didn't bring the church. <laughs> and these are important things. Now, there's a scene, if you saw it, in, uh, um, in The Irishman, where uh, 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 Jimmy Hoffa is going to his end. He doesn't know it, he goes into this place, this, this uh, house. house. And I walked in on the first day on the set, of this particular scene. I walked into the house and I see this house. Nothing you could really overtly recognize, but I knew that this house was deadly. Just the way they had put it together. But you couldn't find it. They, they didn't have things all over it. 
It was just simple furniture, but in such a way, I thought, this is so, I mean, you talk about artful, and, and, and that's what I saw. This is what is done as directors. And, 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 you, and you saw, it didn't do anything, but it, this is a place where someone was going to die. Yeah. And and it looked like a normal little no, but, house, but it wasn't because they did certain things. And if he ever would go into the details of what they did, yeah, you'd know what they did. <laughs> it was a lot, but it looked like nothing. So I, I don't see the world that way. I don't see the world as, uh, oh, my, my, my creative uh, feelings don't come from getting concepts like that. It, it, this isn't me. So I'm not a director, because I, I don't want to. First thing I do when I finish the film is I go read a play. What play am I going to do? You know, I'll do Richard again, um, in the church, of course. <laughs> you know, but, but that's my thing. So the other directing things I did is because I liked particular plays. If I did Chinese coffee, I'm sure none of you saw it. it didn't. Uh, uh, well, that's good to hear. <laughs> I did it because I very much wanted to, I, enjoy, I wanted to preserve that, uh, piece of material that I really liked it. I liked what it was. I liked the writer, uh, Ira Lewis, who's gone now. And I, I liked that atmosphere of what those guys were going to in the village and the, the, the artists in the, in the, in the, from the 60s, now in the 80s. And the whole concept made me feel like I wanted to, I wanted to be in it. And I didn't have anyone I could pay to direct it, so I did it myself. That's why I directed. And then I directed another thing called The Local Stigmatic, again, which was very interesting. And, you know, and I did that, knowing that this is not going to go anywhere. But it was a way of me preserving some of the stuff. I had the, I had the money at the time, so I was able to help with the financing of it. And that was my reasoning. So even though I directed film and whatever, I, I don't look at it, I don't look at myself that way. I have no desire to do it. And I have great respect and admiration for people who just do that and it's not me it's like you know you're 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 you, 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 I, I like football but I won't play it <laughs> <laughs> yeah. so Bob <laughs>